Previously on the Desert Ducks. We had all these torrential rains recently. This is a perfect timing for monsoon season. Everything is obviously much greener than you normally get, but you also get a bunch of insects. Woods Wash is our main objective, and we are going to be looking for some petroglyphs and pictographs. And today we have biologist Danny Cuellar, historian Richard Elliott, our resident psychologist. Stephanie Perry and biologist Marty Lewis and Boo. Woods Wash is the name given to a well-hidden petroglyph site. To be fair, the wash itself is quite some distance away from the actual petroglyph site. It's more of a navigational reference point. So in the interest of preserving these priceless treasures, I will not be giving out any directions on how to get there. Suffice it to say that it is somewhere in the Eastern Mojave. And to our haters on YouTube who like to say we're giving out information, we are certainly not the first to put Woods Watch on the internet. And we found a little lizard, like, oh yeah, there's a lizard. So I, we caught it, and it's a Mojave French toad lizard. Uma scoparia. And the reason they're called French toad lizards is because they literally have fringe toes. They have like a fringe on their toes. And the reason they have this was because um, when they're being frightened, they use that fringes to throw sun up, sand up into the air and then they cover themselves in sand. And that's one of the best ways to catch these actually. This one was much smaller, so it's not doing it yet. But when they're adults, they run away from you, they bear in the sand, and what you do is you just grab them underneath the sand and just pick them up. So that is actually one of the easiest lizards to catch. The food As is often the case for the it's desert dogs, yes. we encounter severe problems with the road. Long, it's a yeah. bane to us, but at the same time, mm -hmm. we know that you enjoy our misfortune. <laughs> Seems like the further I go, the worse it gets. Like, what the hell? How am I supposed to do this? How many, uh, how long, far have we gone? Uh, what can you tell us about what happened here? What, what are we doing? <laughs> so apparently we ran into a wash and uh, my vehicle was in front of the Um So we're trying to like figure out a plan how to do it because it's pretty deep. We dug into the sand and it is, I mean if, if I get in there it's going to just bottom out. So we decided to use some fence, fence posts, pretty wide ones too, so hopefully this would work. We put them uh, parallel to the road and then I'm going to drive over these. Hopefully I don't sink in or else we're screwed big time. I helped carry these pieces of wood and there's gigantic black widows all over them. <laughs> I was like, ah! Uh, that scared me for a second. I, didn't yeah. even I was like, ah! Oh. I think this like gauging your guys' face made it a little more scary. You did. <laughs> so that worked out good. Maybe on the way back out, we'll re reinforce it with some, find some more rocks or something. But well, we know we can do it. Yep. That's what you do. Assess the situation. <laughs> After we're done, we can talk about it. <laughs> I've seen you go over boulders. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the snow. Snowflake Mine Road, man, that was a trip. Oh, yeah. like bouncing around like a little toy. <laughs> it wasn't even a four-wheel drive either. No, <laughs> it did well. pretty well. <laughs> I know that people are complaining about that. Cause you guys need to get a four-wheel drive. Yeah. Yeah, what's the point? Or, I mean, then, <laughs> oh yeah, we should get a helicopter too, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, really? Might so as what's well. the point? <laughs> ISIS. Roadrunner. Oh, what's that? You missed it. Oh, that was pretty sweet. There comes a point where we can go no further. Uh, no wonder Danny tapped out. Oh, look at the side. Quit going to the left. That's why. Look at that. Oh, wow. That's a lot of power right there. And then it just all eaten oh, up over there. So the dogs prepare to walk 10 miles to the site. Uh, the road is too messed up. So we had to stop somewhere and we're going to walk all the way for the rest of the way to Woods Wash. So right now I'm uh, putting sunblock on and uh, getting ready for this hike. 
putting sunblock on because the sun's out and UV rays can stimulate proto-oncogenes in your, in your cells, which cause cancer. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long, arduous hike with beautiful scenery and peculiar landmarks. Just about to hit these cliffs, I think I see petroglyphs. What's interesting about these petroglyphs is that they represent three different eras of petroglyphs. The first date back to the Archaic period, which is approximately 4,000 to 10,000 years old. Then there are Mojave style petroglyphs, and then the later Chemahuevi, both of which are sometimes superimposed on top of the older petroglyphs. There are many different interpretations as to what these ancient designs could mean. Hey, what do we find here, I see? What do you see? I see a slug with leaf on it. A slug with beef? Leaf. Oh, a slug with a leaf on it? The good thing about these uh, petroglyphs is that we were just remarking that there's very little sign of vandalizing. And uh, it's a very secluded spot. And as usual, I'm going to make sure that it's not easy to find by our videos. I'm Andrew Perry. Let's try and keep it reasonable out there. Get again? Sorry. Turkey and provolone uh, on very fresh wheat bread. Delicious. And I got the same thing. Pretty good. I got the same thing. Really good. Oh man, not yet. Your opinion on the beanery? The beanery was one fun because of the old history behind the original beanery. Um, two, Mike Williams to run the place really nice guy and he made a sandwich and so very delicious sandwich I'm glad it was here so we have lunch that was nice sad that they'd be leaving in October and retiring so it's going to be up to the National Park Service who's going to get the bid to run the beanery again hopefully somebody soon after Mike leaves but it was well worth the stop any waiting at all or no? <sighs> being just basically a sandwich shop and salad and stuff in the small scale, I, I give it a good six or seven for what it was. It's small, but as a restaurant, you know, you have to drop it down to a four or five because it didn't offer all the food you get in a restaurant. But well worth it. Yeah. For the beanery here in Kelso, I'd probably give it around probably seven. Uh, and it gets most of those points just because of where it's at and everything. And uh, I like the exhibits here, so other than just eating. Uh, it's a good spot to actually learn some new stuff and see what life was like around here. So that gets most of the points. I took three points off just because of uh, the food selection, but really, you know, you can't complain. We're out here in the middle of the desert. This is probably one of the very few spots where you can actually get something to eat. Fresh sandwiches like that, so it's a good thing. I have to agree with everybody else. I would probably give it about a six. And the reason is because like, everybody said, like, it's a sandwich place, salads. There's not much selection, but the location itself, when you're in there, you almost get that 1940s or 50s look with all the wood, the dark wood and everything. So the ambience is pretty cool. And um, like I said, it was just sandwiches and salads. So I'll, I'll give it a six. So out here at the Kelso train depot, they had this, this little sandwich shop called The Beatery. And um, I liked it. It's very simple. 
it's just basically a, a little sandwich shop for people that visit the center, and then not 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 too much more from, from that. So I guess seven. That's good. Our homeboy Jeremy, he's a new Jeep owner and this is his first time on a rough trail. So this is actually going to be pretty cool because he's going to be going down a very, a fairly steep slope. He's a little worried right now, but he'll, he's gonna, he'll do fine. But uh, I mean, I'm not a four-wheel driver myself. I know your fear, but your vehicle could handle this. Yes. Right. Honestly. I mean, it's just, you're a new newbie. I'm the same way. If I was in, I'd be like, shit, I don't know, man. 